The Lord be with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer on the fifth Sunday before Advent. And thank you for joining us wherever you may be. I want to begin by mentioning a very kind lady from Larne who took the time to phone me this week and to say how much she has appreciated the online services from Eglantine. And she especially wanted to thank Jonathan and the choir along with the children and the readers who have taken part in the services over the past number of months. Patricia, may I thank you for your kind words of support and encouragement and I look forward to welcoming you here to All Saints sometime in the future. Can I also say a big thank you to the lovely lady who keeps me looking respectable every week by washing my surpluses and albs. And she knows who she is, but I want to say a special thank you to her as well. Next Sunday is All Saints Day, and of course it's a very special day for us as we celebrate our patronal festival. So our worship in church next Sunday will be a celebration of the Eucharist and then the online service will be a service of thanksgiving for the faithful departed. And normally that service would be held in the evening in church but because we can only have one service each Sunday I thought it would be appropriate to broadcast it online. And the names of those who have died in the parish over the last year are read out, along with anyone that you would like to be remembered. So if you would like a deceased member of your family or a friend to be remembered, please send me an email during the week or telephone the rectory. And please contact me by Thursday of this incoming week. Our lessons this morning will be read by Matthew Allen and Matthew has joined the parish recently and so we're delighted to have him with us. The opening hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be.
Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. You shall reprove your neighbour, or you will incur guilt yourself. 
You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbour as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, 
How can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, save the Queen. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. The Collect of the Fifth Sunday Before Advent. Blessed Lord, who caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning, help us to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day, Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all people everywhere, whoever they are and whatever their needs. O God, you created us and you love us as our Father. Teach us to trust you and help us all to know that you love us completely. Help us to trust that you will always answer our prayers and that we must not only ask, but also listen and look for the answer. We pray for those who hate, that they may learn to love. We pray in particular for those who suffer at the hands of others and for those whose lives and liberty are overtaken by causes which are not their own. Grant, Lord, that all people may live without fear and hatred as they walk in your ways. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for people of faith throughout the world. 
that aspiration to godly truth might prevail and banish the temptation in humans to commit atrocities in the name of faith. We pray for the church worldwide, its unity and its message. We pray that its light may shine in this world of darkness, that all may know the true love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that we may be proud to confess that we are Christians. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for governments that they may rule with wisdom and justice and with respect for their subjects and for other nations. We pray especially for those who represent us in the Northern Ireland Assembly. And we pray for the United States as it prepares for the presidential election, that wisdom and truth may prevail over personal ambition. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who suffer in mind or body and for those who care for them. We pray for the sick and the sorrowful, for those who mourn, for those without faith, hope or love. We pray for any known to us who are in special need of our prayers at this time and we remember them now in a moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy. And we give thanks to God for all those who have departed this life and whose love of God and neighbour has brought them to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In our Gospel reading today, we see the Pharisees up to their old tricks once again. They try to catch Jesus out by asking him a question the way they so often did. In our readings over the last number of weeks, we find Jesus involved in a long series of disputes with the Sadducees, the lawyers, the chief priests, the elders, the scribes, Pharisees, and their disciples. In each confrontation, he proves himself more careful, cleverer, and inspired than his adversaries. When Jesus questions them about the Messiah and his relationship to David, they are stumped and finally they are silenced. But before being silenced, a legal expert from among them asks Jesus one last question in order to test him. He asks him, which commandment in the law is the greatest? In order for him to answer wisely, there will be a confirmation of his teaching authority. It seems that after a long day of verbal battle, even the Pharisees begin to lose steam and wonder whether their efforts had been worthwhile. Jesus' answer is classic. Loving God is the first thing the most important thing. But with it comes an addition. To love God means that you also love God's people. The ancient rabbis put it in similar terms. What is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbour. That is the whole law. What more can be said after this? Silenced, 
the Pharisees finally withdraw from the fight. On the next day, they hatch the plan that will remove this troublemaking prophet and permanently silence him. The key problem in interpreting this double commandment for our time is that we lose sight of the biblical meaning of love. Our culture has equated love with intense emotion. To love is a stronger response than to like, and both are measures of a passive response to something outside us. We like chocolate, we cannot help ourselves. We love a movie, it entertains or moves us. We love a boy or girlfriend, they make us happy. We love a spouse, they complete us. But biblical love is not passive, and it is not strictly emotional. In the Old Testament, there are references to many kinds of love, but the love referred to here by Jesus is the kind of love that we find in Deuteronomy, the love of Yahweh, the love of God. And this love is far from passive. It is the active response of the faithful person to the love of God. God's love is also active. God chooses to love Israel above all nations and to bring his love through this chosen people. To love God with all one's heart and soul and mind is to choose to respond to God even as God chooses to love us. And so feelings and emotions don't enter into the equation. In the New Testament, the principal word used for love is agape. Like philia or brotherly love, it is a passionless love. Eros is the word for passion or desire. And the latter two are used sparingly in the New Testament. Agape in the Gospels has some connection to emotion, where God cares for his creatures and for creation. But chiefly, it refers to what can be called loving kindness. It is not passive emotion, but rather it's active mercy. It is marked by patience and generosity, again both acts generated by the one who loves. In short, loving is a choice and not a feeling. If we can replace in our listeners' minds the cultural cliches about love with a biblical understanding of love, we can begin to make our way to understanding today's Gospel reading. To love God with all our heart, mind and soul seems nearly impossible when we think of love as an emotion. How does one conjure up feelings for something as remote, mysterious and disembodied as the concept of God? We can't look into God's eyes, wrap our arms around the spirit, or even see the face of Jesus. If we could, that might evoke in us a profound feeling of love. We might fall in love with Jesus' beauty and grace if we could know him as Mary and Martha did. But we are commanded to love an intangible God. It is likely that many of us will admit failure in feeling a deep abiding affection for a God who is so often distant and unknown. Nonetheless, to love God is our duty as Christians. And likewise, loving our neighbour is difficult. If love is merely our passive response to the person next to us, we are likely to be more often repulsed 
and moved to love. How can one legitimately look into the face of an enemy and feel unqualified love? It is nearly impossible. But biblical love is not passive. It is not something that occurs to us without our control or will. Biblical love is something we do. It is loving kindness, merciful action that is both generous and continuous. And herein is the good news for Christian people. To love neighbour as oneself is to act towards the other as one would act towards those closest to you. We treat the stranger just as well as we treat those that we love emotionally. When the action to each is equal, the love to each is equal. This is counter to what we expect, but it is in keeping with what the commandments require. This means that to those with whom we are intimate, to those we do not know, to those who may be dirty, and even to those who harm us, we can act according to the law of love. We can be merciful and gracious. To love our neighbour as ourselves is to make a conscious choice and then act upon it. And what about love of God? Again, as God chose Israel and elected to forgive her at every offence, so we can choose God and serve him in every way. We can love with our heart, through generosity to God's people. We can love with our soul by worshipping God and praying for our neighbours and ourselves. And we can love with our minds, studying God's word and letting it correct us, enlighten us and send us out in loving action to the world. See how these commandments are connected. The greatest commandment and the second, which is like it. When we love God's people, we are always and at the same time loving God. They are inseparable. Surprisingly, sometimes our emotions follow suit and we actually feel a love of one another or a love of God. But the emotion is not commanded. Only the action of love is commanded. And so in Christ, we can do this, even when we don't feel like it. Amen.
peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.